This is the annual two-day conference for Keep Louisiana Beautiful, for local affiliates, for local officials, community leaders, and anyone who has an interest in keeping our community clean and beautiful. Keep Louisiana Beautiful is a statewide organization under the umbrella of Keep America Beautiful. All of the affiliates throughout the state of Louisiana fall under Keep Louisiana Beautiful as a nonprofit organization dedicated to keeping our state clean, litter-free, and beautiful. We focus on litter abatement, recycling, beautification, and other efforts that really keep our environment clean, beautiful, and friendly for everyone to enjoy and use. We really have been focusing on our three main priority areas of increasing environmental education, improving policy and infrastructure, and strengthening environmental law enforcement. We talked a little bit about last night, and uh, Representative uh, Stuart Bishop was with us last night who offered the bill. We were really pleased to see House Bill 111 uh, pass last, uh, last spring. And if ever the strength of our affiliate network was in question, this proved how uh, important our network really is. So when, when Representative Bishop first uh, met with us and we had that initial conversation about this proposed bill, we sprang into action because we understood the importance of it. We emailed all of our friends, our partners, and our affiliates and asked you all to make your voice heard. And y'all did so in a big way. So representative senators from all over the state, they heard from y'all. And I think it made a difference because it passed unanimously in the House and in the Senate, and that doesn't happen often. So at the same time, y'all remember last year, we rolled out ROPSI, our environmental education program, consisting of 10 different lesson plans, the activity sheets, and we announced that we would start doing some teacher workshops. So last year, we started our teacher workshops. We have been to Lafayette, we've been to St. Tammany Parish. Uh, just this past weekend, we were in Assumption. We've been um, Tangibaho, um, Jefferson. Next week, we are Abbeville. And next week, we're going to be, let's say, Monroe, and then we'll be in St. Martin. So we've been kind of traveling the state. Um, the reception has been fabulous. We have trained 157 teachers and that reach is over 2,700 students. And it was really great timing for us. I wish I could tell you I planned it that way, but it just worked out that way, that when the bill was passed, we have this new program that's available free to all teachers in Louisiana. So we'll continue to do these teacher workshops because of our funding. We can't you know, do as many as we would like to. Um, so we are now working with trying to get into all the school boards and school districts to get them to approve the, the lesson plans and get it to the teachers that way. So those of y'all out there who have strong connections with your, your school boards, please let me know because we would like to start working that angle. Also, outside uh, on our display table, there's a sign-up sheet. If you are interested in us coming to host a teacher workshop in your local community, Sign up, we'll follow up with you. We are booked up for this year, but we'll make sure that we reach out and get you on the calendar for next year. So improving policy and infrastructure, of course, is a huge piece to solving the litter problem. So House Bill 111, House Bill 77, which if y'all are not familiar with that, that was Representative Burke a lot two years ago, it doubled the, the litter fines that came with um, a couple of, of problems and House Bill 111 just kind of amended that and kind of tried to solve that. So it increased the litter fines uh, to $1,000 and over, which forced it into jury trial, which you know comes with its own set of problems. So this was just kind of an adjustment, brought it down to $900, so it doesn't, it's not required in the jury trial, so we're hoping that that will work. Infrastructure, so we provide grants every year. Last year we awarded 110 grants to 21 different parishes. If y'all are not applying for these Healthy Communities Grants, we encourage you to do so. It is a way for us as our state office to get money to local communities because we understand and we value that the work you're doing in your local community, that that's where we're gonna see the greatest success. So you do not have to be an affiliate. You can be a nonprofit. You can be uh, in, in state uh, government. You can be in um, municipality, parish government, other nonprofit, 
to apply for that. Also, new last year was the trash receptacle grant. We know that it is, um, it has been proven, studies tell us that when trash and ash receptacles are available, people will use them instead of littering. So we purchased a total of 65 trash receptacles that were distributed to local um, communities throughout the state. We spent uh, not quite $30,000 on that, on those grants. Our grants are available online come January 18th, so please go on our website and, uh, and apply. It's our way to provide additional resources to y'all. Strength and enforcement. So that's the, the kind of the third stool to that, uh, the, the third leg to that stool. Um, I mentioned already House Bill 77, environmental law enforcement training. So we have partnered with Wildlife and Fisheries, with DEQ, with EPA, and also with Rick Moore and St. Tammany Litter Corps. And we kind of have this little dog and pony show that we go around and we, we travel to different communities. Um, we've probably done about seven of them so far. Last year we were in Jefferson Parish and Lafayette, uh, trained over 110 people. And it's just really to, to, to get everybody kind of on the same page, say, hey folks, we need, we need your help. Elected officials are, are uh, invited, constables, justice of the peace, law enforcement. We just, we need to increase our enforcement. Um, and then the second part, uh, the third part is also increasing our affiliate capacity. So day in and day out, you know, we work with y'all, we have 40 affiliates throughout the state. It is in our best interest, it's in Louisiana's best interest, that y'all are all strong and very impactful in your local communities. So we do this by doing a, a number of different trainings throughout the year. Of course, our state conference is our biggest one. We also do four regional meetings um, in different parts of the state. And again, it's a way for us to share ideas, to share resources, tools. I, I was a affiliate director, y'all know, for eight years before you know, coming to this position. And some of the, the greatest uh, things that I was able to do in my local community came from other affiliate directors. Um, there's no sense in us recreating the wheel. Someone had mentioned that, I think it was Sarah, uh, yesterday with the wildflowers. We're all in this together. And so if someone is doing something in another community that you can duplicate, replicate in your community, let's share it. That's, that's the beauty of the network and the affiliate. Um, we do bi-monthly support calls, and we provide support and resources uh, not just to our affiliates, but we get calls from communities all the time. Campbell will spend hours on the phone helping them, hooking them up with resources and tools or just kind of hand-holding them. They, they want to do something, they're not sure what to do. So our support extends not just to our affiliate network, but to all communities in Louisiana. And of course, grants. That's another resource and tool for you. So here are some of the, the numbers, and, and this is our collective impact. So all of our affiliates that reported to Keep America Beautiful on Dashboard, these are our numbers, some of our numbers from last year. So this is success that should be celebrated. Everybody in this room, pat yourself on the back. So our volunteer hours, again, that is the heart and soul of this organization are those volunteers. Um, almost 275,000 uh, volunteer hours. Over 21,000 acres of parks improved. 214 waterways cleaned, 621 public spaces beautified, 2,044 trees. I love that number. Over 4,600 plants and flowers planted, 215,000 pounds of recyclables, 373 pounds of litter, 36,000 youth reached and educated. When we talk about breaking the cycle and where are we going to invest, that youth education piece, that's huge. The total value to the state of Louisiana is in excess of $6.5 million. I thank you. You should celebrate these numbers and please let's give everybody a round of applause. So 
the other thing that Keep Louisiana Beautiful does, it's important that we educate, that we do our work with enforcement, that we support our affiliates and communities and build their capacity, but it's also important that we get the word out that as a state office, that we are constantly keeping our state and the uh, clean and beautiful, love the booth, don't pollute message, top of mind awareness. Because people need to be reminded to do the right thing. So we have um, a media, media value, and this again is statewide. This is not just Keep Louisiana Beautiful, but this is all of our affiliates in the room. The value for print is $238,000 for a total of 460 clips this past year. We did a Love the Booth, Don't Pollute campaign, digital campaign. Y'all remember last year we had the first lady here, the secretary from DQ. We did the, the, the campaign, I mean the uh, contest and pit that and announce that. And from that we did a digital uh, campaign. And so I'm going to show you. But anyway, she has been a huge supporter and friend, and so we appreciate all of, all of her work. In addition to that, we also produce three other spots that highlight um, people, Louisianians, in outdoor activities. One focused on tailgating, another one focused on um, young people through fast food drive through and another one was uh, focusing on voting. And those four spots, we, um, like I said, we did a digital media campaign. Um, we had over 15 million digital impressions and 3.5 Facebook impressions. Um, then we also, Leslie has done a fabulous job managing our social media, our Facebook and Twitter accounts. If y'all are not following us, please do so. She always comes up with some really smart things. Um, and so we have seen an increase in our followers and our likes up by 9%. And we also have seen an increase in our shared messaging and posts <coughs> by 72%. So our current demographics for our social media, we have 66% are females, and the majority of, majority of them range between 35 and 54 years of age. 33% of our followers on social media are male, and only 4% of them are in the age bracket of 18 to 24. So a number of years ago, uh, when I first came on board, we did a survey. And one of the things that we wanted to pull from that survey was to find out what was the demographics, who are the people that are more likely to litter, so that we knew how to focus our campaigns better. And the, the result of that was that males, 35 and under, are more likely to litter than any other demographic. Okay? Sorry if that's anybody in this room. <laughs> So as you can see, our social media, even though we have some growth, and I think that we are doing a really good job, we still are engaging more females in a higher age demographic than those folks that we really want to bring on board. So the question is, moving forward, looking ahead, what is it that we're going to do as an organization to change that demographic? How do we reach out to those people who are more likely to litter than others and get them to join us in our movement for a clean and beautiful Louisiana? And I am proud today to say that our answer to that is a partnership that we are entering with the New Orleans Saints. So, so about four 
months ago, uh, Evan Ashton, he's with us today, and he's the uh, senior corporate partnership with the Saints. We began talking, and uh, four months later, we are happy to announce that uh, Keep Louisiana Beautiful and the New Orleans Saints are going to be working together this next year. on a few of these, these points, just kind of give you an overview, um, and then we're going to celebrate. So we'll be uh, able, of course, to use the marks and the logo, and you know, one of the things when, when Evan first came to me, um, I told him, I said, you know, we're, we, we're different, right? So we're in the business of changing people's behaviors. I don't have a product I want to sell. I want to change people's behaviors. So it was really important to us that there was a huge community education, community outreach, community involvement part in this. And so that's where some of the, the youth development part came in. So the Saints already has a youth development program. They, are, they go into uh, at least 90 schools a year already. They have their little Saints van, which will have our logo on the side of their van. Um, and they, they talk to young people about life lessons you know, kind of how to do the right thing and be responsible and good citizens and, and those types of things. So they will now incorporate message points that we provide to them into <coughs> their already developed youth program. We will also be able to take our Roxy Toolbox Kit and have that as a leap behind for the teachers so that once the Saints are gone, they can still can teach the, the children through those lesson plans. So we're excited about that. In addition to that, you know, when we, when we first started talking, I was, you know, Evan was telling me about some of their goals as an organization, okay? So of course, reaching out to young people is important to them. It's important to us as well. Um, of course, sports program is important to them. As an organization, coastal restoration is also another important part for them. So I tried to take the things that were important to them and kind of marry them with the things that make sense and are important to us. And that's where we came up with the youth sports green teams, what we're calling it. And so we all know that we have a huge problem with single-use plastics. Just a few weeks ago, they put out a report of talking about the incredible amount of plastics in the Gulf of Mexico. And so timing again was, was really good with this one. So what can we do to promote um, eliminating plastics, single-use plastic bottles? So when you think about it from little kids, a little bitty, all the way up from rec ball to high school and you know, then college, started, think of how many plastic water bottles, plastic Gatorade bottles, plastic Powerade bottles, are being used during workouts, trainings. I know, I, I have three girls, and I remember when they were young, and we were at the, at the playground every Saturday. And you know, because our recycling rates are so low in Louisiana, unfortunately, a lot of the playgrounds and a lot of the schools, as y'all know, don't offer recycling. So you have all of this plastic that's going in the trash can every Saturday at the end of every practice. And so if we can get young people to take the pledge to be plastic free, then we can start to change that behavior. And if we start with them when they're young and they can work their way up, you know, Alma's shaking her head because she is a big, you know, <laughs> anti-plastic person. So the Saints are on their website, they're gonna create a landing page. And they already have partnerships and relationships with athletic directors from the high schools. And so we're gonna do posters and a mailing piece that goes out, with both of our names and logos, asking them to please be a plastic-free team and make the pledge. They will go on the website, they will register, they'll take the pledge. The Saints are producing water bottles for us that will have both of our logos on, that will go to the team so that every athlete will have a water bottle so that we wanted to make sure that it was available for everybody, no matter if you're in the rural big city, if you are in an impoverished town or not. Um, so that no student would have the excuse to wear, I can't afford a reusable water bottle. We're going to provide it for them. So we're going to start there with the high schools this year, and hopefully our intent is to see that it grows. It can grow to the entire student body, and it can 
we can then go into other schools and other grade levels. This is not just for football teams. This would be open to all sports within the high schools in Louisiana. So we're really thrilled about that. The other part to this is the um, awareness and the social media. And I've often said, just because I can't think of anything else to call it, but I, I talk about the cool factor. You know, litter's not that cool, right? It's really not. <laughs> but the saints are really cool. <laughs> so if they can get the attention of young people, young males, then, you know, sometimes, and Evan says it best, you know, sometimes those, those uh, the players, they walk into a room, and you would think that God just appeared, you know? <laughs> that all of a sudden, whatever they are saying or selling or whatever turns to gold. So we're hoping that that will be the same for us. So we will have a Saints talent that will produce a commercial for us that will air on the pregame countdown um, as well as the um, Saints Tonight, the, the shows that air you know, before the games and after the games. So it'll air at that time. Um, the other thing that's going to be really cool is that they're doing uh, this year, it's just about two or three weeks old, something that they're called the, the Saints Daily Morning Report. So if y'all do not follow the Saints, please do so. So every morning they do a live Saints update. And it will be called the Saints Daily Morning <coughs> Report presented by Keep Louisiana Beautiful. Nice. And in addition to that, we will have between five and ten seconds where we can tag it on every morning spot. So that will be us submitting to them. It could be like little green tips. I mean, as you can imagine, 10 seconds, it's gonna have to be something brief, but maybe a sentence or so every day, and we can control that message. So it can be a green tip of the day. It could be remember, love the boo, don't pollute, those kinds of things. The important part is, is that it's that consistent, consistent message. Their reach on social media is huge. It's the largest in the Southeast region. So they are reaching 490 million people, where our digital campaign reached 3.3 million people. So we're going to be able to get our word out to a, a, a huge group of folks. So we're really, really excited about that. Then in off season, they will also produce three additional spots for us using some uh, Saints talent. And those will be bringing the Saints talent outdoors. So it may be it's, it's them on a boat or at a festival, those kinds of things. We still need to work out the details. But again, those, those spots will be promoted and posted on their Facebook page. So um, I would like now to introduce to you Evan Ashton. He is with the Saints. He's with the corporate uh, marketing um, uh, sponsorship department and uh, he has put a lot of time and effort. He went to all the departments and kind of like, you know, got them all on board and I don't know what you told them, but it must have been something <laughs> really good. <laughs> and, uh, and it's because of him and his hard work and his persistence, like I said, we've been talking for about four months now, that this became a reality for our organization. So, Evan, do you want to say a few words? <laughs> Thank you. Really just uh, appreciate being here today. Um, just real quickly, just wanted to say it's been a pleasure to work with the Keep Louisiana Beautiful team, and we are extremely excited about the things that are upcoming in the future. So thank you. Y'all will please join me. Y'all notice that everyone has a little fun. We are going to stand up and celebrate together and get crunk. So join us with the Saints this year.
just about aesthetics and it's not just about the quality of life, but we know that studies have shown and it's been proven in communities throughout Louisiana that a clean, attractive community is, does much better when it comes to economic development, when it comes to recruiting businesses, to attracting employees. We have found that large businesses that are trying to hire a large number of people from across the country or across the world have a difficult time doing so if the first impression of that community is one of litter, of neglect, of that people don't care about that community. We have had stories shared with us where businesses have looked at a particular community in our state, have seen the area around it in its appearance and have decided that they would not choose to put their business there. And it's very important if we're going to continue to grow as a state financially with a strong economic base, to have strong jobs for our economy, for our residents, we all must work together to keep Louisiana beautiful and clean. This organization, Keep Louisiana Beautiful, is very important as it relates to um, encouraging and leading the way um, for beautification in our in our city and in our communities. Uh, certainly we realize that uh, the quality of life is very important for all of our citizens and quality of place is very important and so to really have a stellar quality of place and a stellar city uh, beautification has to be a priority and so that means that uh, litter uh, and trash cannot be the norm or we cannot allow it to uh, dominate our community and so uh, this is a very significant part of the equation for quality of uh, life and it's very important when we talk about things like economic development, growth, uh, uh, businesses locating to an area, uh, having clean, a clean space in a clean city is very important. Keep Louisiana Beautiful is truly a remarkable organization made up of uh, incredible people to begin with. Uh, great leadership from their executive direct director Susan Russell and a board of directors that understands that mission uh, of improving community environments, but the cities and parishes that have pulled together across the entire state um, are really doing what they do best, which is to love the boot and not pollute. This group plays a very significant role uh, statewide and in our city and parish. In fact, they were an integral part of a cleanup that we had early on this year uh, called Brooms Clean Sweep, where we had our city council members uh, cleaning up, all of us simultaneously on one day dedicated to clean up. But what I want to see as mayor president, I want to see the citizens of our community become stakeholders in keeping our communities clean. It's great when we have volunteers who want to come and help pick up litter and trash, but it's even better when the citizens who live in those communities become stakeholders in keeping their community clean. Keep Louisiana Beautiful um, is very important because it brings like-minded people together to raise awareness about the importance of keeping our state uh, litter free and also um, green and just a clean environment for us to enjoy and for our children to enjoy. The group is, they're inspirational and I think one of the things that is so wonderful is that you've got a, a mix of, of individuals that represent government, they represent nonprofit, um, they bring their business Business representatives in they recognize them for what they what they do so through that combination of, of individual responsibility and and that also that that realization of how important partnerships are uh, they are an incredible group the conference has been wonderful over the past two days the people who have attended the conference have had a wonderful opportunity to learn about different aspects of what they can implement in their communities to engage the public engage local leadership and help spread the message so we're hearing everything from unique litter abatement projects to creative fundraising because we know it all always takes volunteers and it always takes money we're also learning a lot about recycling initiatives which is a new uh, focus and push for keep Louisiana beautiful we're finding more and more people 
people who want to see mandated recycling across our state. We also had really unique topics of conversation that have dealt with zero waste, zero waste businesses and zero waste families. And we know that some of that work is happening across our state. So it's fun to be able to bring all of these people and these experts under one roof to be able to share and network and come up with new ideas on how we can continue these efforts in our state. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? Please go to our website, keeplouisianabeautiful.org. All of the information is there if you're interested in becoming a part of this program or an affiliate. And you can also find us on social media. So please follow us and like us and learn more about this wonderful organization.